jump in here a moment, but. And we'll wait for Dylan to unmute. And you think DMAX is Dylan? DMAX, I, I think that's I think Dylan. that's a safe guess. Can you hear me? <laughs> I can hear you. <laughs> There we go. Oh, there we Usually go. And Steve invites me at auto changes me to Commissioner Maxfield, but okay. yeah, that that whole auto invite did not work today for some reason. I just tried doing them again, and it won't send them out. So anyway, okay. Anyway, so shall we start? Uh, pursuant to Chapter Twenty of the Acts of Twenty Twenty One, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner by emailing Steve McCarthy at McCarthyS at AmherstMA.gov. That's M-C-C-A-R-T-H-Y-S at AmherstMA.gov. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access through proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best, best efforts, we will post on the town website an audio or video recording transcript or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. And with that done, let's call the meeting to order at 5.05 p.m. and take a roll call of attendance. Guest on. Here. Kelly. Here. Doug. Here. Dylan. Here. And I'm here and we're all here, great. And then, um, thanks, the next thing is public comment. Is there anyone here for public comment? Um, if so, this is general public comment. Raise your hands with the raise hand button. And I don't see any, I don't see any, no public comment. Okay, moving on. Uh, licenses, oh, okay. So these are the two special short-term alcohol serving license applications. And Steve, you said both of them have been withdrawn? Yes, yeah, so they were both withdrawn this afternoon, one of them just 15 minutes ago. Okay. Um, so I guess their plans have changed. So um, they will um, not be not be presenting today. Okay, thanks. So, but in their place in um, UMass has a license which was not noticed in time, but needs to be approved before the 28th. And so Steve sent you the paperwork so that we can kind of preview it and then hopefully have a quick meeting next week um to approve it if that works out and it looks like mr trispit is here is that right should we talk about that Does everyone need a few minutes hey to everybody how are you hi. Yeah. hi nice to see you how are you good yeah so the uh it's homecoming weekend uh, next weekend the 28th through the 30th um and the um external relations is looking to do the uh beer garden uh, station, what they did last year, which happens on Metawampe Lawn behind the campus center um, with a tent and a bar set up um, for the folks coming for a uh, homecoming weekend to um, have like a little block party out there. So <clears throat> it's the same footprint that they used last year, uh, I believe even the same security or but um, Laura John is also here with me, and she's the um, conference planner on the event. So if you guys have any specific questions, I wanted her to be here because um, she's more familiar with the logistics of the event than I am. So. Okay, thank you. Um, Laura, do you have anything right. to add, or does anyone have any questions? And did you want to go over those? We got those the paperwork like about 15 minutes ago. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's the same as last year. Okay. The tent will be entirely enclosed, the tent within the lawn. Um, at the one entrance, there will be security guards checking IDs and giving out wristbands. Um, there will be other security guards at key entrances and exits of both the lawn and Blue Wall so that no one can leave and enter the campus center or leave and go off to any other part of campus from the lawn with their alcoholic beverage. Okay, so, and this is the one where the, it's by the doors to the blue wall, which open up and then the seating area is right there. Is that right? And not the one yes. that, not the back one, kind of like the, where you go into the lobby. Is that right? Correct. Okay. All right, um, any questions? About this, it's the what we did last year. 
If not, um, can we schedule uh, a quick time when we can meet for maybe five minutes next week and approve it? Would that be all right? Does anyone have a suggestion? Should we do another Thursday? Um, does that work for everybody? Dylan? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've got my meeting at uh, six with the CDA, but as long as it's before six, which would right. be five, that will work with me. Is that, is that okay, Hallie, uh, Gaston? Yeah, yeah. Five, 545? 545? I mean, I, I don't do know. Is that, I, I don't care, but that, that seemed, you know, that would work fine. Okay, should we say me? 545 next Thursday? Does that sound right? good? Okay, great. So um, we'll make sure the, to schedule a meeting for 545 next Thursday, October 28th, and um, to uh, go approve the license. Excellent. Well, I, I want to just thank you guys for uh, you know, adding us in such short notice and uh, working with us on it. It's very much appreciated. So thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming in. Okay. See you bye next everyone. week. All right. Bye. Okay, great. So that's it. Um, and then next up is our future discussion item, license fee comparison. And Steve has also scheduled a public hearing so that we can uh, do a change of fee schedule following the comparison discussion if we would like to. Is that right, Steve? Yes, so I yes. did um, I did get some feedback from, I presented uh, Gaston's uh, comparisons mm -hmm. to the uh, finance director and uh, the building commissioner. And, um, they thought it was very thorough and interesting, and um, they um, they were open to some limited number of fee changes. But before a uh, a whole uh, overhaul of them, they wanted to take some more time to to do a bit more review and more comparison. And um, as uh, renewal notices are going out um, on next Thursday, um, we will um, not have enough time really to do that. They want to take you know a, a, a longer period to to look into that. So they did have a couple suggestions. I mean, ultimately the fees schedule does lie entirely within the authority of the board of license commissioners, but they did have some suggestions of um, of changes that they would um, recommend if the board was inclined to make them. Um, and so the first one was from for the coin operated devices. They're currently a hundred dollars a piece um, with no cap, and for um, for some licensees that gets um, that gets very expensive. Um, and um, they recommended to change that to be $50 per device um, with a cap of $500. Um, I did have an interesting conversation with Gaston the other day about um, whether whether the coin operated device license fee would apply to um, to, to devices that are uh, that are um, operated bills or um, or with credit cards. And Gaston thinks it would still apply, but um, I think it's an interesting question. And mm -hmm. um, and they also suggested for um, all alcohol off premises. It's currently twenty five or two thousand dollars. They suggested um, a increase to twenty five hundred, and the wine and malt off premises is currently fifteen hundred, and they suggested a, a increase to seventeen fifty. All right, thanks, Steve. Uh, Dylan, um, do we know how many businesses actually are using coin operated in town, and, and and what's the most anybody's paying for that? Do we know yes. that, Steve? I can pull that up right now. Actually, if you give me a second. I, off the top of my head, I would say probably around 15, but let me, let me make sure. Uh, Hangers, the, the one, you know, arcade in town, right? Yes, that is, um, yeah, the hangar has um, a significant burden. I think they're usually around 3,500 because they have uh, many devices. Oh. Um, and the other ones. You mean 3,500 be between the uh, coin ops and, and liquor or? Uh, no, just, just coin, coin op, just coin op. Wow, so they have 35 wow. machines. Yes, yeah. And then there are one, two, three, <laughs> four, five, six other licensees. My, and, I mean, uh, my, um, my inclination would be rather than just an absolute cap to um, reduce the price at a certain point. Uh, um, um, I don't know. Um, I mean, I don't know. Does it, do we care if... Um, if the hangar has a hundred machines or, or 35, I mean, if, um, do we, do we want, uh, the town to wet its beak on each machine? Uh, Doug? Yeah, I don't know that it necessarily, I, I don't disagree with you that there could be sort of an upper limit, you know, like what, you know, up to 15 machines and the rest are sort of just in the mix after some, some threshold. I don't know what one there would be. 
But I think the other thing that this begs for me is, is whether we're getting all of them that we should. Um, because I, are they, are they, so Steve, maybe a little clarification, is it coin operated amusement machines or just any coin operated machine? Because, you know, every, um, every uh, newsstand where you drop 50 cents in and get your Hampshire Gazette or every uh, soda machine, all those would count. And I doubt that we're collecting from everybody if, if all those count, but if it's amusement machines, meaning like pool tables and video games and that sort of stuff, then it's a little more narrowly defined, but I, I'd still have, hazard the guess we don't we're not getting everybody to sign up it is a um it is only for amusement machines um, i'm looking at the statue right here which says um a uh to, uh to to a person to keep a billiard pool or scipio table or a bowling alley for uh higher gain or award um this may be actually the wrong reference but it is uh, it isn't coin operated amusement machines okay yeah, I, I would still hazard a guess that there are pure, probably a few of them out there that aren't getting uh, aren't getting licensed. But you know, we, yeah, Dylan. We we talked about this I think before. Um, yeah, the the jukeboxes, which are credit card operated or app operated, those count or those don't count. Those do count, right? Are they supposed to? My interpretation is that my interpretation was that they that they don't guest on put forward an interesting uh, counter argument that he, he believes they do. Um, mm -hmm. And so uh, I really don't know. I mean, I think that that's been um, my interpretation is that they don't. But I guess suppose that's an open question. And that 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 um, that jukeboxes don't um, that the devices which are not operated by coins in any way do not. So amusement devices that are bill yeah. or credit card operated. I, I yeah, I I don't think that um, I don't think that adding a a, a credit card um, a receiver is a uh, meant to. I mean that the the purpose of the of the fee and the coin operated definition in the uh, Massachusetts general laws is is uh, not something that um really should hang on the form of payment uh the the fact that it was called coin operated um i mean really what it is is paid machines uh, the coin operated is incidental to the fact that when that was passed in the um the state house no such machines would cost more than four quarters and moreover the technology didn't exist even to process a single dollar so I, I would hang zero um, weight on the term coin operated. I, I think we should just substitute it for paid. Yeah, I, I did actually find the correct um, statutory reference. It's 177A, not 177, if you'd like me to pull it up. Sure. Yeah, let's see it. <coughs> and the other question is, what year was it passed? I mean, that is a great question. I am going yeah. to guess um, well before any of our parents were born. Yeah, yeah. I would I would agree with you that again the the intention here was about about payment for for the service. The other thing I think, and particularly why it may have said coin operated at the time was because. Um, you know, well, it doesn't. It, it, I don't see coin operated. Yeah, it, may, it may not, but yeah. I think the idea being that you know. Um, oh, the deposit of the, a coin. They, they were fair that like they registered your your coinage properly, uh, and you know didn't just sort of take your money and not give you the amusement as it were. You know, so that's why you license them so that people keep them in good working order and that they're not uh, sort of taking their money, that kind of thing. So, I mean, I, I don't think form of payment necessarily uh, changes anything. Because um, I think the, the risk now with like a credit card is, is there a skimmer uh, that it reads cards, you know, so that, that's, a, that's part of by charging a license. What we're, we're asking people is to keep their, their stuff in good working order. It's not, you know, uh, taking more money than it should, or it's not, you know, subject to, to some, uh, you know, fraudulent uh, additions and that sort of thing. So, um, I may think the license still matters. I don't think, like you say, the form of payment doesn't matter to me. Right, and it says uh, deposit of a token. I mean, you know, uh, entering a credit card to take pay is, 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 a, is a kind of token. Um, mm -hmm. But what, what's interesting is this, uh, what's a free play pinball machine? And why would that still um, 
require uh, uh, the same the same license. Um, yeah, I I wonder if free play is um oh free is in for free. I'm there are oh, a lot wow. of uh, very odd definitions in this section of chapter one forty. So it's interesting. It's like at any where something is something is set in motion, and not. Well, it, I'm I'm just looking on uh, on the internet, and I don't know if this is right, but the uh, there's a website, Free Play Pinball Arcade, that says there are only 140 known to exist and less than 20 public locations to play it worldwide. Huh. Or any of them in Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got a law for that. Yeah. <laughs> Not with this huge regulatory. Uh, if you ever want to go to a really interesting rabbit hole, you can try to figure out what a, a Scipio table is, because that is also something that uh, you regulate. And I don't know if uh, anybody in the internet is even sure what exactly it is beyond some kind of archaic uh, board game. A Scipio table. Huh. But, you know, actually, to this point, though, you know, one of the interesting things <clears throat> that may be a factor, and I was just, just, we were talking about sort of taking credit cards, you know, at a lot of um, restaurants, they now have that, for lack of a term, kind of a kiosk that sets on the table that you can pay your bill. But one of the other things it's doing while sitting there is enticing you to play a game and asking you to pay to play. Um, I mean, I think you can answer like one question for free, but then they want to sort of engage you in in uh, like a trivia or that sort of thing. I don't know if we have any restaurants with that, but I mean, certainly places like Chili's and Applebee's and, you know, restaurants of that sort have those sort of tabletop devices. Mm -hmm. To my mind, that is is a, you know, coin-operated amusement machi machine. Um, and so, you know, for one thing that we should be getting, you know, should have those be uh, licensed for one thing, but then the other thing is because they're on like every single table and it's also part of how they get paid, you know, that begs the question, it goes back to the initial question Gaston asked about, about uh, is there some sort of limit or threshold that we want to think about? Because, you know, in a restaurant, there could be 75 of those, depending on how many tables they've got. Um, now, the ones, the restaurants I mentioned are all in Hadley, so that's Hadley's problem, but I think, you know, they could come, and there may be some in, in Amherst that have that too, but I would, I would beg the question as to whether those, those devices qualify as well under this license. Okay, I'm finding the definition in the Maryland code for um, free play pinball machine, a machine that on insertion of one or more coins releases one or more balls for the player to propel by a plunger. And if the player gets a certain score or combination of numbers rewards the player with a specified number of free games, allowing the player to continue to play the machine without a, a, inserting additional coins or tokens. So anyway, I, I don't see what the difference is with the regular pinball machine. So I, I, I get that now because, yeah, so that's pretty much all pinball machines that are, mm -hmm. are, are I would have thought, yeah. Yeah. I, I guess you could have a really lame pinball machine that you can't get free plays on, but. <laughs> it's just for the glory of the score. Yeah, I mean, I think the question is, what's the point of the license here? It uh, there's no, um, it seems to me there's no real purpose of a li of of the license except for the town to get a, a cut, um, unless we think that we're trying to discourage um, these amusements, and I I don't think that that's the purpose. It's just to get um, to get a few of the coins that go in the machine each year, as far as I can tell. Yeah, I, I suppose I, unless yeah, oh no, go ahead, Doug. I was just going to say I think the the rationale is 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 probably harkening back to when it, you, they did take coins and having them be functional and serviceable, and so making sure that that they operate in good order and that they're not just taking people's money. You know, that's the intent is that you're like, all right, we're going to license you for this because we want you to keep it in good working order. I think that's mm -hmm. really the only reason for it. Okay. Which, which makes me not. Yeah, you know, I mean, hundred dollars sounds like a lot. Personally, I just don't know. You know, for a single license on that, but but I do think, you know. Um, Again, I think that that um, it's not it, it's not necessarily a bad thing. I just don't know if it's it's quite the you know sort of perceived problem. It might have been once upon a time. People may have thought they were gambling type devices, which they aren't. But um, but I do think some you know there there may be other types of amusement uh, devices that aren't getting captured here that we want to maybe capture 
But again, I think, you know, does it need to be a hundred dollars? I don't know if we necessarily need to. I think you're probably right about the gambling being the purpose of it. Um, it says this forbid that they be used for gambling. It says that they have to be uh, in open view at all times when in operation. So I wonder if they're worried about people rigging the pinball machine or something. So. Yeah, it could be. It could be. Um, so um, do you, is there a, a way that we could, uh, first of all, find out if any of those machines that you talked about, Doug, are in Amherst? Or how do we go about finding ones that are there? I mean, be, and then to the second point is, uh, like, is $50 a device up to a cap of 500? Is it, you know, maybe $50 for the first I don't know, 25, and then you drop it to 25 machine. Do we want to talk about something like that? Or I mean, I think the purpose of of um, knowing how many machines there are is a reason not to do a, an all you can eat buffet. Right. Um, and so I that's I'd be inclined for that reason to just uh, step it down. Um, um, Fifty dollars for the first um, for the first ten. $20 for the next 10, $10 for the next 10, I don't know. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Does that sound good? Is that too low? That $50 for the first 10, is that too low? Do we, or too much of a shock to the system at first? <laughs> I mean, this is not a big revenue item, right? For no, no. And, and I mean, it, it's, um, you know, it's kind of like we're we're regulating for one business, right? Right. <laughs> so we have to be, um, and, and I guess one thing to be clear about is whether it's uh, per per um, entity that owns them or per establishment. I, I would think we're talking about establishment, um, right? So if if the hangar owners opens a, a second place, it's it's per establishment, and then. Um, I, I mean, we're, we, I don't think we have a policy purpose to try to prevent arcades, right? Uh, no, no. And if, if anything, if someone's going to have a few, um, then, um, I think having a kind of incentive to add more is, seems fine. Um, All right. Yeah. Doug. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think the, um, I think this is also just sort of talking about ways to sort of scale it. I mean, I think this is worth. You know, sort of asking a finance director and and uh, to kind of to see if he has any opinion about it, you know. And it's also kind of a question for Steve and and think about himself and his office staff. You know, sort of management of tracking when you have a scaled or step thing. You know, just right. get more more work for Steve than than is worthwhile. But um, but I think you know, kind of kind of running it by the the uh, the finance director. For, you know, kind of the impact because you know if we cut it in half to fifty dollars, you know. And granted, like you say, there's only six license holders to begin with. This may be, you know, we're maybe talking to you know hundreds of dollars, as opposed to thousands or tens of thousands. But, um, but you know, I think they might have an opinion about a scaled, a scaled system or, you know, a threshold they think makes more sense. Or, yeah, he he did endorse the the uh, figure of uh, fifty per and a cap of five hundred. He he did, he yeah. did approve okay. of that if the board was so inclined. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. Uh, um. Well, you know, if uh, if Hangers wants to give us a uh, you know free drinks for the year, I'm fine with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you sure that's illegal? So is that the? Are we gonna? Uh, so are we accepting that price, the fifty dollars? Um. So well. So um. Or do you want to just look at the throw run the scale by them again that we guessed on was talking about? So I suppose um. Um, and is, this, is the scale different than that than that that uh than that um figure I just gave you? Was that just that it de decreases with no cap progressively? Was that what you were thinking, Gaston? Like fifty for the first ten, or and then uh, I mean five the next ten, and then I I I mean I I think that um you know from the the question whether uh, we're acting uh, in a way that is contrary to the people who are responsible for the town's finances, I think we have a blessing here. Right. Um, um, and so I, um, I mean, do we know how, how many, so, so the, uh, the hangar has 30, is that what we, 
I believe 35. I can, I can pull that up. Let me take a look. I believe they have 35. And then there's 35. Um, a couple other establishments that have them. I do think we used to have more of these licenses, but I know um, the VFW used to have some and they've closed some of the and some of the business. I, I know uh, High Horse used to have a couple and they've closed. So some of the businesses that used to have these have closed. Um, but let me pull that back up and get. So if we if we did like the first 10 at 50, the next 10 at 20, the next 10 at 10, it would um, take uh, it would take the hangers bill down from three grand to 800. Um, I mean, just to give, uh, you know, I set up a little spreadsheet here if we want to uh, mess around with the numbers. I mean, uh, I mean, I guess the other way to look at it is what do we think? Uh, a place that has 30 units. How much of the coins that pass through those 30 machines do we think is reasonable to uh, to kind of charge? I was telling Steve that in high school, I managed to, to call an arcade company to just put some machines in the school and I was collecting half the money. <laughs> <laughs> As long as they are in plain sight, visible by the operator at all times, yeah. I don't have any problem. Um, so I do have the final figures. We have six licensees. Um, we have the uh, stackers with one machine. Um, we have uh, McMurphy's with one machine, the spoke with one machine, uh, the harp with one machine, the hanger with 36, and the uh, American Legion with three. Okay. I mean, I don't, I don't think, uh, I don't think taking, um, you know, twenty bucks a machine is that seems fine, you, you know. Um, so I, you know, I, the idea of uh, fifty for the first set of numbers and beyond that twenty. Um, I mean, and if what seems egregious is um, hanger having to pay thirty six hundred, um, any of these changes that we're talking about will address that. This is only uh, establishments that sell alcohol subject to this. Oh no, any anybody, any place. Yeah. Uh, I just know a couple of the places. I think the uh, I know the laundromat I go to has a coin operated pool table and a uh, pinball mm. machine. Mm. Don't know if they're licensed or not. So, huh? I will say no. Well, oh, Steve, you got to go down there, the baseball bat being like, where's our $40? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I mean, we, we could, we, we could make that distinction that the $50 is only if it's a, if it's a licensee that has um, any alcohol license. And uh, if we want to kind of promote other places, both having them and reporting them, then we could have a, you know, let's say we step down to 20, then that the, the fee for that place could be 40 bucks then that would be an approach i think we could take no alcohol so you're saying no alcohol license 40 dollars well i mean so you know one simple scheme would be um if you have a a, a liquor license it's 50 bucks mm -hmm. uh, a machine up to 10 beyond that 20 if you don't have a liquor license it's 20. Oh, I see. Okay. For example, that would be, and and if if that were the deal, then um, uh, the hangers fee would be a thousand twenty from three thousand. Um, the I, I yeah, but maybe like proportionate to the revenues, it's insanely expensive compared to the alcohol licenses. I mean, the turnover on alcohol for the three thousand dollar license or whatever is magnitudes of what uh these coin ops are so mm -hmm. um if we if we want to promote um this kind of entertainment then um I, I mean i don't know what different how much difference our fee makes but um uh you know i'm open to thinking that maybe it should be even lower than 50. i don't i mean to go back to to gaston's question before so the, the idea of this fee like why we're doing it it's it's so people have an incentive to keep the machines and 
good working order because they're paying a license. That's that's the idea of having the fee in the first place. Yeah, uh, Doug. Yeah, I think, so. I, I think so. I think the other thing is is that you know the intent of having you know um, amusements of this sort is to have people hang out longer, mm -hmm. right? And so they're hoping you know if I'm a bar owner or I'm a restaurant, if you hang out longer, you're going to buy a dessert because it's having dinner and leaving, right? You might be like, oh, I'm going to play pinball for 20 minutes. I'll come back and have a cookie, whatever. You know, so I think the intention is to have people sort of stay in the in the business longer, which at a place that serves alcohol makes you know a lot of sense because it's like, well, there's something for them to do, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that's a piece of it. Uh, so it, it is. Um, I mean, I think it's some of the rationale as to why you have those kind of machines in your in your business. Um, but I and that and the, but I think for us, I think the the regulatory piece is just hey, keep it in good working shape. Don't you know. Charge people too much, you know. Don't, you know, squeeze them for all they're worth, kind of thing. But also, just, um, I mean, I think there might have been some concern at some point that, you know, there, there was, uh, perhaps some, some less than than honorable intentions of people having these kind of machines in their, in their, you know, to sort of take money from people or get them sucked into, you know, sort of addiction based stuff. I think that's not really the concern we have, but. I think, you know, just having them recognize and that they need to take care of the machines and they function properly. So people want to use them, they, they do get the amusement. But I guess, I guess my question here is how, how does a fee do? Cause I mean, I, I can have a busted machine and, and pay the hundred dollars if I, if I want, um, uh, it, it's not like paying it means they have to do it. No, I, I, I would suggest it's like, that's something that we put not necessarily on the license but on the application or the renewal is to remind them it's like hey we're, we're intending for you to keep this in good working order i think it mm -hmm. also begs the question of enforcement it's like you know because there's clearly maybe some places that haven't been paying it so that's the other piece is that if you then enforce it you're looking around to make sure that they're functioning and that they're you know on the up and up and that they're you know all the places that have them are actually doing their thing so that's that's the sort of conundrum I think is it is it a complaint driven enforcement or is it a is it an active like it's like we're going to cruise around and check to see who's got what I don't know you know yeah. I'll, I'll put it out there I'm I, I'm not opposed to completely eliminating this fee yeah. like yeah I, uh, don't get me wrong I'm I I don't mind having high fees for certain things like your licenses, especially, but like that makes perfect sense why we do it. Right. Um, were these, I don't know, I, it, it seems like it, it doesn't really seem a purpose and it doesn't really seem like it's a, a big uh, revenue driver for the town either. It just seems kind of nitpicky uh, to have it in there. Yeah, I, I wouldn't disagree with you on that. Yeah, so. <laughs> Is yeah, something you want to suspend it for a year and see how things go and then eliminate it? Or is it better just to eliminate the fee right away? I mean, let, let's ask it. I think the other, besides the fee question, is there any significance to, to knowing where the machines are? Does that matter uh, to, or should we really just you want to have a coin out machine? Have it. Um, yeah, I don't know. Is there a, a significance, Doug or Steve? Uh, not that I'm you aware know? of. I mean, I think it yeah. falls into the category. It may have once at a once upon a time it may have mattered to people, and it may have been an important issue. I don't think that's the case anymore. Um, I think the only other thing we would consider is whether you know, given that it's it's written into law, whether we're required to to have a license for it. Right. You know, if we're required, then we need a little bit of something just to kind of offset the cost of Steve's time. So we don't want to make it too inexpensive, but. Seems but, it's permissive, right, Steve? Yeah, I can um, pull that up again. Some of these things I are mean, kind of. Uh, it's just like, you know, um, are the heavens going to fall if we stop having. <laughs> this is going to break the town. Um, as long as we have the Scipio tables under control. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, so this is um, May grant. Yeah, city May grant and after written notice to the licensee, suspend or revoke a license. 
unless senior revoked. That's the thing. So the, the 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 advantage of having a license is that if somebody is mess is abusing them in some way, we have something to take away. That's right. Um, but I, I I would. I, I doubt that there's any record of a problem with coin op machines in, in Amherst in the last 10 years. Oh, well, this says down here, number four, the annual fee for a license under the section for any automatic amusement device uh, shall be $20 unless otherwise established by the town. Yeah. So can we just do that to start with or do we just want to get rid of them? <laughs> oh, and we so we were we were charging the max, right? I just thought yeah. that. Is that twenty dollars? Yeah, which is you know like you know wet. Just, oh, no just event like should be max. greater than one hundred dollars. Yeah, which is what it currently yeah. is. It's just like the mafia. It's like <laughs> we we want to taste. We want to taste. <laughs> yeah, I mean these you know these establishments are being taxed if they're making more money. Um, that's gonna somehow end up affecting their their leases and property taxes. I don't know. I um, Unless we think we need to keep track of them, uh, Dylan's suggestion is has appeal. Yeah. Um, I mean, we don't necessarily have it. If the consensus is generally we're all in favor of uh, eliminating this right now, uh, I could take some time, talk to some of the folks uh, at the bars in town. I know the owner of the Moan and Dove, who used to be the owner of the higher Jason DiCaprio, he's usually over there. I think the owner of the Spoke is in town now. Can talk to a couple of people and see if they have any idea what the value of that might be. From the, I don't know, even there, and I'm sure all of them are going to be like, "Oh yeah, no, it's terrible. We don't, we don't need to spend this money," which might be the case. But I don't know. Maybe somebody has an idea of, of any value of this. I can't think of any. Well, right. I think that's where like the you know building commissioner or fire chief or or you know public safety somebody in that group as well you know might have some inclination as to what this is about mm -hmm. you know that that'd be the other group to check i don't i don't disagree with you dylan on, on checking with some of the owners and saying oh it was because of this thing that they made us do this you know somebody may know the history on this but but um right okay here I let me let me give a counterfactual so you know someone um there's a, some cheap real estate in town that's not being used. Someone gets a decent lease and they just put in 20 machines. That's all it is. Um, uh, do, we, do we care at that point? Is, do we care any more or any less? I mean, well, as long as they're actually paying their taxes and not laundering money through coins. Right. I don't care. <laughs> Yeah, that's, I guess that's the other reason to like know who has them is that they are they are a good uh, money laundering device. I didn't even think about that. That's clever. Although if you're yeah. laundering money with coins, it can't be going too well. Well, there was a coin shortage. So, you know. Yeah, or you can use credit cards right now. I, I mean, um, you know, something that we could do that's smaller and less radical would be to go to the go to the $20 and, and revisit it. So if we drop it to $20, Steve, because so we're on, also under a time constraint here, right? Because these are going to be renewing very shortly. And I mean, so there are so few of these. I'm sending everything out on the 27th, but there are so few of these yeah. that um, if we really wanted to, to, to uh, reconsider this on the third, it wouldn't really be that much of an issue to delay that in particular. There's okay. I mean, the smaller the the smaller it is, it, you know. Besides the hanger, it's like really an annoyance that you have to apply for a whole license for something so trivial. Right. Um, and so the other approach would be that we only charge a fee if you have more than ten or more than five. That you only need a license if you have more than ten of these. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm still I'm still in favor of just just eliminating this entirely uh, if we can. Uh, I kind of agree with Dylan in that I think it creates more work tracking down who has five versus four machines, and you know if you have four five machines but one's broken, what do you yeah. do? Yeah, and it's just another one I think where uh, you know if you comply with the law, you're effectively punished by paying the fee. And if you, you don't, 
get you know ignorance i think in the case of somebody who's not right. That's right. selling alcohol doesn't yeah. know about the yeah. fee yeah yeah they they're just saving you know 200 bucks a year or whatever what have you uh by not telling us about it so it does just seem like cumbersome bureaucracy to me to, to have it in there if we don't feel good about enforcing it against the violators then we shouldn't have it that's i i think that that's that's another yeah. way to look at it. Um, so, I mean, do do we agree that maybe Steve had Steve talk to, I don't know, police, fire, whoever he thinks might be, have an idea of what value this might have, wait on that, and then yeah, I think that's, if they can't think of it, we can eliminate it? I think that's a good idea. Yeah, um, it's difficult too. Yeah, yeah. So, so, and that, and that, since the finance director gave us the blessing to uh, to to forget about that revenue, does anybody else care? Yeah, we'll see. So, Steve, would you be able to check with those people? Yeah, and okay. um, we would probably, if we're just going to eliminate the requirement for a license, that probably would be a different notice of the public hearing. Uh, okay. The license fee change. I mean, we could set it to zero dollars, but then we would still have to issue them. Right. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll, so let's um let's uh if you can get that information, then we'll notice it accordingly for the next full meeting. Yep. For the third. All right. Okay. Thank you, Steve. And and then maybe we'll get um, coverage from the Amherst Gazette. Um, All right. <laughs> license Commission. Miss Pac-Man takes over Amherst. <laughs> well, I did pull on the paper today, Doug, and you were on the front page um, it, it's of the funny. reminder. Yeah. I got a text from my daughter because a friend of hers sent her the a picture of the the cover of the of the reminder. Oh yeah. You know, it's basically me like this. <laughs> it's like this huge picture of my head. It's really quite quite scary to be honest. In another role that I was on the cover of the of the, the reminder. Okay. Um, so in the other direction, so we'll deal with coin operated and uh, on the third of uh, the potentially raising the prices for all alcohol off-premises and wine and malt off-premises. Do we want to discuss that now? And that's only going up from 2000 to 2500. And then you said 150 to 1750, Steve? Yeah, 1500 to 1750, 15. yeah. Okay. That's just, that were the suggested figures. Okay. Which are our beer and wine, oh, I guess like the, the North Amherst store provisions? Yeah, that one. And, um, oh no, that guy would be, Amherst, Amherst Currently, spirits. yeah. Did they just drop their application for alcohol? I think there has been some spirited negotiations going on, um, and Cousins is meeting with me tomorrow morning to look at um, what they would have to do to um, be open by November 30th. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Okay. Cousins comes back. All right. Um... I guess I'd, so, I'd, I'd be more inclined to um, to raise the all alcohol off premises than the wine and and beer one. Yeah, I would too. Yeah, I think what really jumped out to me from um, Gaston's uh, Gaston's uh, work there is that, um, and looking at the uh, the quota report, we were able to get a hold of the uh, the quotas um, for every town in the Commonwealth, and many of them are. Um, over quota for section 12. Um, but we are interestingly are not even when many other towns similar to larger sized are, which makes me think that um, due to the very young population of Amherst, we probably have less um, demand for um, on premises uh, alcohol service than um, off premises. Mm -hmm. hmm. Which seems to be um, rather uncommon. But um, anyway, there certainly seems to be quite a bit of demand for the all alcohol off premises license, which is our only one at quota. Right. Keep making people check IDs. So, you know, there's your problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're saying, Dylan, that the 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 rigor of the of the carding drives people to off premises. Exactly. You just need one person 21 to fuel the party. Oh, that makes sense. So, and and I don't know if the, I mean, I guess maybe this is a policy issue for us to take up. I, I'm not aware of the off premises using the fancy card readers even, right? And paying the monthly subscriptions. Is anyone aware of 
and off-premises having that level of carting? I, I think most of the places that I've been to, they, they have a card reader there. Okay. Um, I'm not a great sample here because when I go and they check my ID, I just get a quick look at it and then move along if I'm getting carded. But um, I know, I think Spirit House, I've seen them uh, do that. I think, uh, I want to say Amherst Liquors, the one right next to it. I think I've seen them use it too, but I don't know. I It's it's definitely not the same as the bars where if I go into a bar, most of them are going to scan my ID, regardless of how old you are, they're going to scan your ID because uh, mm -hmm. they want you in the system uh, where it's you know less important for the liquor store where you're not about to drink it and get rowdy in the store. So um, they don't necessarily need that, that legal record of who was in there. Uh, but I do believe they, they, they have them. Um, I've had it done at Lakers 44. I think it is a, a good sort of policy question though, because I think it is, um, you know, it, those establishments are much more likely, you know, I think about, you know, as, as Dylan said, sort of Spirit House or Amherst Slickers, which are both right there on, on College Street, you know, they're going to know a lot of people personally because it's the same people who come in regularly, but, you know, and, and, but whether we want to, you know, have them sort of up their game to, to have a scanner or guarantee that they have a scanner that they're keeping up to date, you know, uh, that's an interesting thing to think about for sure. Um, because I, I do think they're going to, there is going to be some pressure from folks near, near appropriate age. Because uh, like you say, you know, uh, it, it's simpler for them in, in the sense that if they have some or know someone that's 21, that person can purchase for the group, but not always the case. But, um, you know, I think it's a protection that they want for themselves too. So it is an interesting policy question, but, but um I mean, I think back to the original sort of, you know, two, two recommendations that, you know, we're, we're discussing that, that go to 2,500 for the all alcohol off premises and the 1750 for the wine and malts. Um, you know, I'm not opposed to raising them both. I think the all alcohol being higher is probably, um, I don't know, you know, I don't know. The, the, the thing is, is this, is if I think about, um, you know, concerns about underage drinking, they're tending to buy a lot more beer and wine, probably more beer, because it's cheaper. Oh, okay. You know, so the, so if you're trying to, so I, I think that they're, you know, an or, you know, a place like a convenience store, like at the corner of Triangle Street, or at the roundabout there, Triangle Street that sells that. Um, and again, with question three, depending on how it changes, there might be a few more that start to press for those kind of uh, licenses. Are those establishments that are more you know, a place like provisions where it's a, you know, it's functionally a core of their business, uh, along with some other things. That's a different approach than like, you know, a convenience store type place that's, uh, it's an add on, you know, their, their attention to that component of their business is a little different than it is at a place like provisions, which is, you know, <clears throat> a liquor store, but also, you know, a food, establish, you know, food and other things, but, but their, their focus is different. Um, so I think that's that's the thing is like you know if you're if we're concerned about overconsumption, inappropriate consumption, you know should we be you know asking more from from those you know those uh, wine and malt places because of the the sort of higher risk and so therefore you know higher bad outcomes that we're trying to to keep an eye on and have them be serious about and all that sort of stuff. So kind of make a case for both increases, but I'm open to. But uh, t following your, your point, Doug, the, I think your, your argument persuades me to maybe be more rigorous about um, the best practices they're following as, rather than the, than, the, than the license. Yeah, no, I think that's so, true. Yeah. Um, I so, I, I mean, maybe my, maybe my, my uh, reaction to your comments would be uh, maybe we're ready to, to increase the all uh, alcohol off premises. And and we can take up the question of carding best practices at, at these at all of the the establishments at, yeah. at a future time. Yeah, I think that we, we want to give uh, with regard to that and changing that sort of regulation about you know hey we need you to have you know this level of of uh, identification of verification. You know we want to give them a little bit of lead time so that they can kind of budget and plan and because there's you know there's getting the stuff and then there's actually sort of 
training staff and implementing and you know those kind of things so we want to you know hear from them as what you know for one thing but also just give them a little bit of an implementation timeline but uh, so i think it is a it's, it is a valid thing to have in a in conversation for sure and i think we should um seriously consider it so steve did they when you talk to the finance director did you say why they should be raised or just that they should be um he thought they were probably um kind of relatively low considering the uh, the amount of demand there is and, and okay. um, the amount of you know business compared to some of those comparable communities okay. um, I think I think what what you, what you guys keyed in on um, and also me is a big difference between the all alcohol on premises and the wine and malt on premises but mm -hmm. he did want to do a little bit more study before giving any recommendations to that okay. um, but um, he felt more confident with the all alcohol off premises and there is clearly a ton of demand for the all alcohol off premises anyway. That's our only type at quota. Okay. There's some high right. bidding going on, it seems. So if we um what does everyone want to do? Do we want to raise the all alcohol? We want to raise them both? More in favor of just the, the all alcohol off premises tonight or waiting another two weeks or like with the coin op? I mean, I'm in favor of raising them both. Okay. All right. Dylan, what do you think? Yeah, I think we could definitely raise them. Okay. If, if that's the okay. case, should I just make a motion? Oh, I think we have to, do we have to open a hearing? Gaston, would we, if we raise them both, would that be all right? I, I, or I, yeah, I mean, I, just... I, I'm not, um, I'm not troubled by an, an extra 250 for the, okay for the wine and beer, but I, um, I, um, so I, I I'm I'm okay uh, with the 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 board's uh, general consensus. Okay. Um, so, are there any further discussion on this before we? Because we have to go into a public hearing, right, Steve? Yes. To change these. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to ask. So, do we do do, do we just like that five hundred and two fifty number? Uh, the, I I assume the board. Do you have any any idea of you know kind of what was the reasoning for for those numbers, Steve? Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Um, I mean, I think he just kind of liked them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they might they might be in line with the other comparables. Um, I don't know off the top of my head, but that was his uh his final recommendation. More money, not concerned about the flack. Yeah. <laughs> huh? So I guess yeah, we we kind of like those numbers too. Those are those are good numbers to kind of like. I mean, do we want to talk about that like? Do we want to raise the all alcohol more, or? I, I think do he does want to do it? some more. Um, some more when we do when we look at it next year, do some more research into um, you know, what the actual externalities are and what the costs of the town are with these types of things. Yeah. Um, but I think uh, me oh. and Gaston did try to look into, you know, how are these these fees set? And I think the uh, pretty much the the way it's done across the entire Commonwealth is, uh, eh, that sounds like the good number. Okay, so this is just like maybe we're yeah. keeping pace with inflation yeah. and we're just I mean, doing we all alcohol okay. create the nuisance of the nips litter which somebody has to clean up so right. that that's yeah 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 something. that should definitely go up yeah at least by this and wine and malt we're you're slightly worried about the corner pack like not the package stores but those marts where they have six packs of beer that anyone can yeah i mean yeah, you you can, yeah i think that's that's the greater risk of, of you know Getting the kind of alcohol consumption we concern, you know, we're concerned about in our community, okay. you know, whether it be problem drinking or behavior that goes with overindulgence, whatever. You know, I think that's that's the, the sort of. So cousins has a if and when they renew or whatever they're doing, they have a they have an off premises wine and malt. Is that right? They have an all alcohol. That's all. Oh, they have an all alcohol. Okay, right. All right. Okay, so do we want to open up the hearing? And so we think that these raises for the time being are good, and then we're going to revisit them next year. Is that the idea? Or, yeah. or during throughout the year? Okay. So is there a motion to open the hearing? So moved. Thank you, Doug. Is there a second? Thank you. Thanks, Dylan. Um, all in favor, say aye. Guest on. Aye. Hallie. Aye. Doug. Hi. Dylan? Hi. And I say hi. I mean, I say hi. <laughs> but hello also. <laughs> the hearing is now open. Um, okay, is there any other discussion about potentially raising 
or not raising or the fees that have been presented to us for the prices for all alcohol off premises and one in malt off premises license fee change. No. Is there a motion to um, adopt the new license fees of uh, $2,500 for the all alcohol off premises and $1,750 for the wine and malt off premises? I have a question first. I'm sorry. Okay. Do we do the actual motion in the hearing? Oh, you're right. Never mind. I mean, I think we, we sort of pull for any public comment and, and that's All right. right. You're absolutely and you right. can discuss in the sorry hearing too. That. Yeah, you can discuss in the hearing too. Okay, I have, right, sorry, right. I haven't haven't done a hearing like this in a while. Um, okay, so we're not can doing a vote. Is there anyone here for comment, or would we like to discuss this further? Anyone have any objections, considerations, something to say? What objections? Seems good. It's okay, good. it seems all right to everyone. Okay, so should we close the hearing? I'll move to close the hearing. Thank you, Doug. Is there a second to close the second. hearing? Thank you, Dylan. Um, we'll take a vote. Gaston? Aye. Hallie? Aye. Dylan? Aye. Doug? Aye. And I vote aye. That is five to zero. The hearing is now closed. So I will make a motion to okay. introduce the uh, all alcohol off premise license from 2000 to 2500 and the, all, uh, the wine and malt uh, alcohol off-premise license from 1500 to 1750. Thank you, Doug. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Dylan. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. Guest on. Aye. Helly. Aye. Uh, Doug. Aye. Dylan. Aye. And I vote aye, five to zero. Um, the motion has passed. Thank you, and the fees have been raised. Thank you, everyone. Um, all right. All right. Well, so, we, um, while we were on this topic, um, I may just suggest um, now I didn't really bring this up with the finance director, but I doubt it'll be very controversial. But the uh, live entertainment license fee of five dollars for the annual license. Oh. Um, I could just put it out there as something to think about while we have this as a notice meeting. I mean, okay. Isn't that like the how is it different from our conversation about the coin ops? Live entertainment. So I, I think on this one, I actually have some, and I've brought these up before, so I'll be brief. Um, I think there, we just have the one for five bucks. Right. I think there's, a, I think we should have a, a short term. Like you're going to have an event. You want to notice to your neighbors, hey, I'm going to have live entertainment. So there could be, you know, those particularly different kind of volume coming from my location, mm -hmm. as opposed to a place that that's their business. You know, you think about like the performance space that the chamber put together. <clears throat> that has a lot more to it, and it will have a lot greater impact on on neighbors and that sort of thing. So I think that license, I mean, to my mind, I'm not saying these need to be, you know, I think the, you know, the sort of short term uh, thing, you know, it's mostly about notification to neighbors, five bucks to cover it, that's fine. I think for longer, more permanent, uh, you know, if that's part of your establishment, your business model, then I think a, a little more, you know, um, is appropriate relative to that. I mean, a little more pay for the license, but also just, you know, the, the maybe even the, the requirements of, of getting a license might be a little more stringent, not like crazy or anything, but at the same time, I think, you know, if you, if, if you have your apartment downtown and suddenly the people that are below you decide to add live entertainment and they're rocking out to 1 a.m. every night because they can, even if they're not serving alcohol, <clears throat> you would have an opportunity to say something about that if you've got a problem with it. So. And if it's going to be all year round or, you know, whatever. I mean, I think there's just th those considerations that it, it are worthwhile to explore. And I think that the license as it's currently structured doesn't, doesn't deal with that well, which is important. Okay. All right. Yes, Gaston. Um, I mean, I, I think we have one example recently, and that was Garcia's wanting to have uh, mariachis once a week. I've never been there when they have the mariachi. Um, but in connection with their business, it is kind of like, do they have a pinball machine or not? Like, um, I don't have that much concern, but if the point is that it's important to have a hearing where people have a chance to object, then that's about having a license at all. And, and the amount is not as important. I'm, uh, I'm not at all opposed to saying that instead of five, it's 50 or something like that. 
I mean, I think that that's still pretty much nominal. Mm -hmm. I guess. And I think the thing for me on, on circumstances like that, by the way, I, I have been to Garcia's when the mariachi's there and, and uh, it's fantastic. <laughs> it's also, it's fairly loud if you're having dinner, but I also, the thing I think about, and, and I think we also had this happen with, um, um, uh, I think it's Mexicalito, I forget the taco place that's uh, near the bank center. They also uh, got a live entertainment license. You know, in both those circumstances, they have outdoor space. Um, and that sort of changes the dynamic in the neighborhood, like during the warmer weather, if you're doing that, you know, so I think that's where, you know, when you start having either outdoor spaces that can involve live entertainment or, um, or, you know, your adjacency to apartments above you, that kind of thing. It, it's just for the conversation, I think. And, and so it, it's, um, again, not to be onerous with it. It's just to be fair to, to everybody. And I think it, it's, and it's different when it's a one, you know, short term. Hey, I'm going to have this thing for a weekend because I'm doing a promo for my business. That's a pretty minor kind of thing. Still want to let your neighbors know it's going to happen just as a courtesy. Most people can live with that for a weekend. If it's going to be, you know, every Tuesday night, you know, the doors go open and the, the band plays and it's pretty loud, that could be, you know, we just want to have an opportunity for people wow. to, move in, you know, uh, uh, make their point. Yes. I mean, I, I wonder if the issue is, is, that if you're going to get an annual entertainment license, um, there should be an abutters notice so people know that to show up and and um, and, and show up at the hearing and make their case. And I don't think we have that currently. Yes. And we we came up with um, uh, a different approach with the food trucks to have the the sign at that location. I don't know if that would work. Um, we know there's limitations to abutters notices with rentals which we have a lot of in town. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think the idea of, of trying to um, elicit feedback seems to be the word, a worthy policy goal. Yes. I, I would fully agree as well. I think that yeah. would be a, the, one of the things I would think would be, we'd go with, you know, sort of developing more nuanced licensing would be that kind of thing. I think in particular, because I think um, uh, it's part of, you know, the, the process, uh, you know, I mean, part of what we're evaluating with a liquor license or anything else of, of that sort is, is it a good fit for the neighborhood, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, that's, I think, important with the, with the, with the live entertainment license too. So. Uh, that you know. sounds almost like we're moving towards a project um, regulations. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But, uh, the other thing I would say is it's, it's a little different than zoning. I mean, it starts to sound like some of those, you know, things that come up in zoning meetings and Dylan can write this more than, than I can for sure. But, you know, there are, there are times when, when that's a factor in the zoning, uh, you know, but you kind of get one shot at that sort of when the, when the property is, is being created or, or, you know, turning over and, and a special permit or something is needed. Um, this gives a review process a little more often, but I, I agree. It's probably a little bit of a project to kind of, you know, sort of frame the, the pieces that we need to think about and, and want people to consider around live entertainment. Okay, all right. The, uh, uh, volunteering, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna say, yeah, one of the nice things about having an annual license is, is one of the things we deal with a lot of the CPA is when somebody buys a property and it has a special permit attached to it, those usually have transfer of ownership, requires it coming back before the CPA. And one of the big things that we always find is just how so many of the conditions of the special permit were not being adhered to because there's no enforcement. They're never coming back to us for anything. You get your special permit. Thanks. See you later. Time to not adhere to any of the special permit. And then, you know, who's, who's going to do something about it? So it is nice having something where you can have that annual license where if it does start creating problems, there's already a mechanism in there um, to deal with it. That's right. Okay. All right. Well, that's something we should talk more about. And since we're doing a, we're scheduling our discussion topics, maybe not next time, but maybe, maybe the third, maybe the third, no, nah, maybe not the third. I'm thinking maybe more towards the end of the year, start looking into it. Am I looking, do you want, do you want me to write something down and or talk to Steve about it? Put something together? Yeah, we get some time to, time to talk, Mary. And there also okay. are like a few different statutes that are licensed that are oh, great. you would consider live entertainment. And I'm not even sure okay. which ones the town has adopted. 
as, okay. as we've been issuing the one that the type that's on the license but that, that we could really go down a rabbit hole but it probably is a good project to do okay all right yeah. well um, you know, I'm happy to do some, try to do some of the legislative history if, 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 if folks want me to look into it. That would be super. Um, great. Thank you. So, Steve, why don't we talk about that in the future, okay. in the near future? Okay. Um, is that it for the current discussion on license fee comparison and change of schedule? Oh, we did that. Okay. Topics not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to the meeting. Rental registration bylaw, you got the current draft from Mandy Johanneke, and I don't know if they talked about it on Monday, but there is a hearing. Is there not, Steve? Or no, yes. a, listen, a listening, is it a listening session or a hearing There on is Monday? a community forum on- Community um, forum. When was it? I closed the email. On Monday, Monday. the 24th um, at 7 p.m. So it's on Zoom, and um, it's to provide a you know commentary on the current draft of the bylaw and things like that. So I can forward you along that email that went out to rental great. property owners. Um, and um, yeah, it may be interesting to see. Okay. And then we should probably put that on our discussion topics for the, th will we have time on the third? How about the third of November? That's our next meeting. So we have for next meetings, we have um, next Thursday at 545. And that's the 20, the 27th. And then we've got a full meeting on November 3rd. And then one on the, then the meeting after that is the 17th, unless there are extraordinary circumstances. And anything else? Are there any other topics anyone wants to? No, no. Okay. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you, Doug. Is there a second? Second. Thanks, Dylan. Um, we'll take a vote. Uh, oh, I do on. have one topic. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Your printed out regulations. We have ordered binders from Staples. So. Oh, great. Thank you. Hey. Oh, yeah, that's right. Just, yeah, we approved the, we did the lunch cart and the um, liquor license decisions yeah. last time. So very happy. Okay. So thanks, Steve. So the vote. Your Christmas presents. <laughs> Guest on. Uh, aye. Hallie. Aye. Doug. Aye. Dylan. Aye. And I vote aye five to zero with zero people absent. Uh, we're adjourned at 6, 11 p.m. Thanks, Thank everybody. Thank you all very much. And we'll see you yeah. for about two minutes at 545 next Thursday. Yep. See you next week. That's great. Right. Bye. Bye. Bye.